Hi, it's Karen from Black Swan Journals, and I wanted to share with you how I made my blue self-care journal. I started out by dyeing some blue papers with the blue ink I was just holding up, and I dye a lot of my papers this way. I do multiple ways. I also do traditional like coffee dyeing and tea dyeing and avocado dyeing, cabbage dyeing. Um, but I also like doing it with ink. It's kind of like watercoloring and it's really freeing and fast. And so I just wanted to mention if you're new to doing this technique, you here you'd want to add as little or as a lot of ink you would like as dark or as light you would like your paper to be. So if you want it really light blue, you know, hardly any color, you would want to do very little ink, and if you want to increase the saturation of the color, you want to just increasing the droplets of ink. So I started out with a doily here, and the doilies I have are kind of funny. I feel like maybe they're plasticky or something. I don't know. They feel like paper, but they don't. Um, they don't take. They don't take the ink as well. They're not as porous. They must have some kind of plastic coating. And then here I've got a envelope that I'm going to use as well in the journal <clears throat> and just putting ink free and having fun and have good music on in the background while I was doing this and just having a really good time painting. Um, I always paint the inside and then make sure you leave your flap of your envelopes open um, because they will probably seal shut if you did not. So I just turn it around so the glue side's on the bottom, just in case, so it's touching the metal and not paper. And I'm going to add salt. So I, I don't always add salt, but in this case I wanted a little bit of extra texture. And um, the way the water moves away from the salt and makes little impressions, and not like physical impressions, but visual impressions. So now I'm taking some sheets of paper and doing the same technique, just applying the ink, doing all kinds of strokes. Sometimes I just dump it right on too. Sometimes I splat it on. <laughs> just do whatever your heart desires. But it's, it can be fun to really pull it up in certain areas and not in others, and it gives you that light and dark later on when it's dry. Also, you can let it run and drip if you want to hold it up longer than I did there. So I do both sides. I always do both sides. The sun, oh, the sun was coming in. It was, it was so nice. It was a chilly day, so it was so nice to have the sun warming me and, and just having fun with it. So I'm running out of my solution here, and I could make more, but it's my last paper. So I start to just dump it on and have some fun, really get it saturated, really get it wet, move the brush around. It, it, it almost looks like I'm in space right now looking down at the earth. Oh, wow, it looks so cool. And then more salt. And you can be as um, generous or not with the salt. It's just, you know, what you like for an effect. So now I'm just going to pour it over the last paper because I felt like I didn't quite have enough. So I just want, now I'm just sort of spreading it around using my paper as a tool. <laughs> um, now I'm just sort of pressing them down because the more you do that, the more color deposits into your paper and topping it off with salt and I just wanted to mention that um, if you're concerned about wrinkles or bumps my tray is going to leave impressions of those things and but I don't mind that but if you do mind that you're going to want to leave it you're going to want to lay out each piece separately flat on something plastic with no wrinkles or bumps and that way it'll dry nice and flat well, it'll dry a little wrinkly, like watercolor paper would, but it won't have all those impressions <clears throat> the way mine would. 
So here I'm showing you some pages that I've selected from scrapbook paper that I've had. Well, I don't know, I might have just bought this one. I recently broke down and bought one. I mentioned it in another video that I was, I was using it in another video. Um, but anyhow, so what I did was is I took two, this particular scrap, there's that paper, all dried by the way, that we just dyed. Um, but I took two scrapbook papers that have white backing. Mine had white backing. They weren't double-sided. And I faced them out and then sewed them together to create, you know, a pattern on each side. So the inside is white. So I sewed those. And you don't need to sew if you don't have a sewing machine. It's okay. Uh, you could make your papers out of your junk journal or your, your self-care journal out of entirely coffee dyed paper or blue dyed papers or whatever pleases you or just regular coffee paper. You don't have to um, dye it at all. But I, I chose to sew mine today. So now I'm going to bone, uh, I'm going to score it here with a scoreboard. And these papers, I left um, 11. They came 11 in the pack. They were eight and a half by 11. And uh, so I went to the center, which was five and a half, and ran down the, uh, the bone folder to create a score line. And I think, in a, I think now we're going to bone fold them. Here I'm showing you some books we're going to play with and have some real fun with these in a second. So here's how that doily came out. See how it's not that saturated in color? I just, I don't know, I'd like a little more color. And then here's how the envelope came out. It came out really pretty. And the salt creates like all those bumpy textures. And so here are the papers that we just did. Um, we just scored them with the scoreboard. And uh, as promised, we're going to bone fold them now. Just showing you what they look like, the different sides. So that one had torn. So I, I, don't, I don't like to judge, but I have to notice and let you know that this particular scrapbook paper was not, it, it seemed quality, but the paper was thin. So, um, I don't think it was as it, it, it cracked when I when I scored it in other words <laughs> so it was a thinner quality which is which is okay and so I learned from that one to apply less pressure on others and they didn't crack so <clears throat> it's really not a judgment after all it's just sort of a noticing thing and and learning how to adjust So here comes the fun part. Now we get to look at fun botanical books from the vintage store. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to cut out some of the pages in some of the different ways that the books offer challenges. And um, well, they're not really challenges, just the different ways that the books are structured and put together. So this one is sewn in with signatures and I'm showing you here, I'm pulling apart one of the signatures right here. See that? That's one signature that has been stitched in, sewn in. I only want one page out of here. I want the whole page like op to open and shut, not just like a piece of the page, if you, if you understand what I mean there. So in order to do this, you have to cut out the whole signature and then remove the page that you want and here's another uh, book that I did the same thing with and here's a music sheet book and this one I was all that this the title is funny it's like um, a healthy American boy or something I thought it was funny <laughs> but here I thought I was going to be cutting out signatures and ooh, I got surprised um, they're stables so I was able to sort of gently just pull out everything without ripping anything. And I got the signature that was stapled in out that I wanted. 
Yikes, look at those. <laughs> they don't make staples like that anymore. Um, so there's the piece that I want. And putting other things to the side for future use. And now we're going to... Oh, here's a garden book that I have that's super cool. Um, the pages are really long, like um, from left to right. So here... I'm only needing one page, not like both pieces that would open and shut together, if you understand what I mean. I just I just need the one page because the one piece rather, not the one page, the one portion of a page. Because it's so long from left to right, it it will serve as one page that I can fold and open and shut. I hope I'm making sense to you. Um, but I love the blue lavender here and on the other side. It is a blue journal, but um, I was happy that the other side had neutral colors on it so that it didn't uh, clash too badly with the blue. So here's another book that's I got at a th all of these I got at thrift stores, but um, it has this like su super like linen-y nice cover that I love. Um, and another book we're going to play with, too, that was marking my place for this one. And, again, this book is so large, like, it's so tall from top to bottom that I only need one portion of the page. I don't need to take out the whole signature um, because it's so tall that I'm going to not – it's also wide, so I'm, I'm going to fold it in half to make a, a whole page – and I'm also going to fold up the bottom later and show you um, and make a pocket. So this one just needs to be cut out easy peasy. There's no signature to cut. <clears throat> so in case you're interested in, in searching for this book, um, I have to say it's got some nice elk and deer and things like that. It has some really great hares and rabbits. But it has a lot of, um, it's got some cute squirrels and things like that too. But it has a lot of um, moles and, and rats and things like that. So it's heavily, it's heavily loaded with that. Uh, so just, just a word to the wise if, if you're not into those. <laughs> um, and then here's a book about gardening. And... I just love gardening. I'm, I'm a professional gardener, actually, um, not with vegetables, with uh, flowers, perennials, annuals, trees, uh, shrubbery, um, design and, and landscape and maintaining, installing, all that. But I'm hoping to end that and transition to this as a career. And I'm just starting out with this. So if you like it, please show me some love and subscribe. Um, please leave a comment. It helps my channel grow. Sadly, on YouTube, you know, if it doesn't grow, then I can't, I just won't be able to do it um, for, you know, obvious monetary reasons that most of us need. <laughs> um, so here's a cool dictionary I also got in, uh, no, this was at a flea market, not a thrift store. And I've seen this, though, at a lot of thrift stores. It's pretty common around my parts, which is, um, I live in New England in the States. And it's got a lot, it's super thin, super delicate, but it's got a lot of images. It's really nice. And the papers are yellow, which is lovely. So here I have die cut some of these uh, dictionary pages from that book, just to give them a little bit more interest. And here's a few pages I took out of a book about the sun and uh, solar power that we're going to use as well. And so here are some other things that um, we can use. Some washi tape that I've made. I think I might use it on my ocean page. Here's some mixed media I did on some packaging. We'll use that too. And then if you have scraps of like fabrics or lace or doilies or anything like that, um, pull all that out. Anything that's in, here's some more scrap fabric. 
um, anything that's in the colors that you'd like to use and it or you don't even have to make it a certain color you can make it every color you can make it a rainbow <laughs> you can do whatever pleases you and makes your heart go pitter patter and so I also wanted to show you some other things that you might have around the house that you could use these are just some trim like pieces of trims and um, like it, you may not be a sewer or have trims but be, get creative like if you have a dress you don't wear anymore or that you don't fit into anymore or it's out of style or a child's um, dress that they've outgrown they often have so much um, pretty trims and laces and just I know this is crazy but sometimes I even take lace off of um the edges of like the camisoles that that are worn out that I have I, I'm not gonna throw that out <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> um, of course I wash it <laughs> here I'm showing you if you have any greeting cards around the house um, those are excellent to use in in junk journals and um, I, here I chose ones that I had that reflected self-care for me like the vibe that they had made me feel very relaxed so here I'm just going to share with you how I arrange my papers. So I was trying to put something, you know, busy and then not busy, busy and then not busy, that kind of thing. There's the blue papers that we dyed. So subtle and not subtle, subtle and not subtle. That'll be the center where we add the deer from the Audubon book. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm showing you now. In fact, I think we're going to add it right now and fold it. Yes, I'm voicing this over. <clears throat> this takes a long time to do <laughs> um, the making of the journal, so it's better to just cut some of it out and then voice over for you. Sorry about my voice. I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. So yeah, the page is quite tall. So I just line up the top with my pages that ha I already have going. And then I fold up the pocket. And then here I put my finger in the middle and slide the bone folder over gently in this case, um, not hard and fast because it's old paper and I'm testing, I just wanna be sure it doesn't rip. And all was well, it did not rip. So now we're making a page out of it by folding it in half. So it's going to be a nice center full spread page with a pocket. So I always try to keep in mind my center spread, the center of your signature, because you actually get to see the full page in this case. It doesn't always go this way, but you know, I try to keep it in mind to put something special here. So again, this could also be an excellent center because I think it's super beautiful. <laughs> um, but it's going to become a page where it won't be a center in this case. So I'm just folding it in half. It doesn't have room to do a pocket like the deer, but I'm folding it in half. It def definitely has room to become a full page that opens and closes with four sides. It becomes four sides now. So now I'm flipping through and deciding where I would like to put that page. I try to balance out my book pages with my plain papers or scrapbook papers. Sometimes I don't use any scrapbook papers and just all plain papers that I've made died. Um, but in this case, I was really inspired by these scrapbook papers and couldn't help myself. Um, so I'm liking where I placed it. I'm loving the flow. I love that blue with, with the green and the purple and loving that. So now for the music paper. So the same deal here, it's, it's tall and wide um, because it's, I took it out, as a, out of a signature. Finding where I would like to put it. I really like those two together. Uh, these are all right. These, I don't love these together. I love these together. I love these together. And I love these together. So back I go 
to the one I didn't love so much. And I think what I don't love about it is how soft the scrapbook paper is, how muted it is, and how vibrant the blue page was. So I guess this was my solution to tone that down. So when you're flipping through the pages, when the journal's all finished and you're using the journal, after that muted scrapbook paper will come the music book paper. And then will come the vibrant blue paper next to the music paper, which I don't mind so much for some reason. It was my best placement out of the, all the pages, and, and I actually really like where it went. So I'm creating that pocket, bone folding it down. The bone folding really re helps reduce the bulk in your journal. It creases the fibers, breaks them down, lays them flatter. So in it goes. So you see, you see what I'm saying now? A little bit of that blue post out, but I like that. It's softer for me. That's, that's my thing <laughs> in this, on this day, <laughs> I change, I change a lot. <laughs> I change my, I don't know. I change my likes and my, and what, what's, what I'm feeling. So here's the, um, another book page I took out of a vintage, um, wildflower book. And here's another one that we took out together. So now I want to find placement for these pages. And sort of flipping through. I really like that. Yep, I'm going with it. <laughs> I don't even fool around. I think. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> no, I guess I don't. Um, yeah, I really like that. Just checking the whole thing is what I'm doing. Seeing if I'm liking how it flows. Just because I like to be inspired when I use my journal. <laughs> Um, so here, the last thing I'm sharing with you is a real quick um, tutorial. Well, it's not really much of a tutorial, a little bit of one here. Um, how I took some very inexpensive, the most inexpensive watercolor paper I own, um, and the most inexpensive watercolors I own. These are actually child grade. They were like, uh, I don't know, $10, um, a little pot of water. And here I'm going to do a quick wash of a spray bottle of water, pure water. Um, a quick one and some cheap brushes, very inexpensive brushes. They don't they don't work that great um, if you're looking to do you know really fine technique. Um, but for this purpose, they're they're just fine. This one's actually a very nice brush, but I don't end up using it. So, um, but what I do with this page is after it dries, I take some metal dies and. Um, well, you'll see. There's a little boo-boo coming up that I, sh I leave in and show you how I fix. But I take some metal dies and I end up taping them down to the, pap the watercolor washed paper when it's dry and run them through my die cutting machine, pop them out, and then use them in the self-care journal in, in blue, in a blue color. So here, um, wet my paper down really, really well with the spray bottle. It's pure water. And then now I'm seeing what is going to happen. I don't really use this paper. So yeah, it's not going to flow well because um, it's inexpensive is my opinion is why it's not flowing that great. And, and maybe it's something else, but that's what I'm thinking here. And I, I do I do believe I'm right, but, uh, you know. So now I'm seeing that I need to add a lot of more water because see how the bristles were like splayed? It was too dry. So I added a lot more water. I'm adding some green and some blue, some green and some blue until I like the tone, adding more water because I don't have enough. And I just keep adding until I like it, the consistency of it, the amount of it. And then I just start washing over my paper. If it starts making a lot of drag marks, don't worry about it because in this case you're going to, you won't notice it because you're going to break it all up with the dyes. And if you are worried about it, you can keep going over it until anything like that goes away. But you don't want to overwork your paper so much that it becomes unworkable. 
and how you know that is the color won't deposit anymore it like lifts and then you see the white of the paper that's when it's like done I've had enough it says <laughs> stop touching me <laughs> move on <laughs> Um, if that ever happens, that's what's going on there. <laughs> they want you, it's the universe telling, will you stop? <laughs> Don't over perfect. No, seriously, I haven't, I've had to learn this. So that's why I'm laughing and sharing it with you. Um, so I'm just sopping up the rest of that color just, just to use it up. And if you wanted to, you could use it up on a scrap paper and then it's, you've got color going on something else on the side but I just chose to dump it here and then rinsing my brushes. Um, don't leave your brushes in pots of water. I think it, it loosens the glue on the brushes. So now I'm impatient. So I'm going to dry it because I don't want to, I don't want to wait. So I'm going to dry it completely and then use my dyes. So the thing that happened was, is that I, I didn't do a good job. I, what I mean is, is I, I tried to let it ride and I used, I, I, I ran my dies through and I didn't tape them down. And sometimes it works and sometimes it skips and it didn't work. So what's happening here is I, I did a whole nother wash of paper in a far lighter color than the one we just did together. And I didn't do that on camera. Because I figured, what do you want to see that twice for? Um, but it came out much, much more subdued. And I added some pink tones to it as well this time. It's just that's what I was feeling in the moment. Um, I do I do love the, these muted ones. But I also really um, loved the vibrant one. But so what happened was is when it skips, it just um, it just doesn't. It, 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 and the whole thing just didn't come out right. So Pokey Tool pops them all out, and, and there we go. And thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, more videos to come on decorating. Bye.